For this video tutorial, we're going to go over how we can have our characters pick up objects using parent constraints and driven keys. So first I'm going to create an object for our character to grab. So I'll just do a polygon primitive cube and I'll name it box. And I'll just leave it the size it is, but if, if you needed a specific object, you could spend the time to model that. I will also create a controller for that box. So I'll go to create NURBS primitives circle and I'll call that box control. Now real quick I'd like to show you if you wanted to you could right click hold over this curve here and go to control vertex and if you wanted to you could shape these controls to be a little more interesting. So if you for instance selected every other vertex here and moved them upward and then maybe scaled them in or out and then right click hover object mode now your curve looks a little differently so if you want to create a controller that isn't exactly a circle you can do that so now that I've got my control in place I will select the object that I want it to control and then I will shift click the control itself and push P on my keyboard now my control curve has full control over the box. Next I will select my box. I will go to my attribute editor, go to object display, drawing overrides, enable overrides, and switch display type to reference. Now I can't accidentally select the geometry. With that in place, I'm going to now create two locators for our object to snap in between. So I'll go to Create, Locator, and I'll move this off to one side. You can name it something if you'd like, I'll just leave it at Locator 1, and then Create another locator, move it off to the other side. Now we're going to want to create the constraint system. So first, I'll select my uh, main control for this box, and I will press Control g to group the objects together, and I'll name that box group and the reason that we do this is so that we have the ability to counter animate this object once it's snapped into its positions. Now I will select one locator, shift select the other locator and make sure in my outliner I can control click or command click if you're on a Mac the box group and then make sure you're in the animation tab over here and I will go to constrain parent press the option box and uh, by default this is probably what it looks like so I will uncheck maintain offset and click add. Now you may notice that your box slightly moves or it might move a lot depending on where your locators are. Basically what it did is it snapped it halfway in between those two locators because it's constrained to both of those locators. Now what I will do is I will select my box control and in the channel box go to edit add attribute and I will create an attribute called switch with a minimum attribute of 0 and a maximum of 1 and a default of 0 and hit OK. Now we're going to create the driven key system where we can have our object snap between the two points. I will go to animate, set driven key and set. I will highlight the control of the main box and load driver and select switch as the driver. Then I'll open up my outliner again, push this plus button next to the box group and highlight this exclamation parent constraint. And I will load driven and I will highlight the locator 2w1 and 1w0. You can either click one and drag down or you can shift click them too. And now I will go over to my channel box over here and switch one of these two locators to zero. So I'll just go to the top one, type in zero, and then go back to my set driven key box and type in key. Then I will select my controller here, go to switch, type in one, reselect my parent constraint exclamation point and switch these two numbers. So this one will be a one and this one will be a zero. And then I'll hit key once more. Now if I select my main controller around the box, I have this control called switch. 
and the switch will allow the box to jump between those two points. If you hold control, you can slowly switch it back and forth. Now in the event that you don't get this in between area and it just snaps between those two points instantly, what you will need to do is highlight your uh, box group constraint in your outliner and then highlight these two attributes that have the red pink box on them. Then you will open up your window animation editor graph editor and you will need to make sure that you highlight all of these keys here and switch it to linear. Yours might look like this, nice and flat, which is not what we want. I will highlight them and click linear and you should see something that looks like an X. Now we should get a nice clean switch back and forth. What I will also do is I will highlight both of my locators with by holding shift and I will go to layers, create layer from selected and I'll name that locator group. Now in case I want to hide those I can hide them or if I want to make them unselectable I can do that. Uh, now I will show you a practical use for this. I'm going to bring in a character here and first I'll hide the joints for this rig. Let's say we wanted this character to hold the object and set it down or vice versa. You will select one of the constraints to be stuck to one of the hands. Uh, now you will need to make sure that you know whether you're going to animate your character with FK arms here or IK arms. So I'll show you both. First I will select one of the wrists, this wrist right here, and then I will shift select the locator that I want and I will go to constraint, parent constraint, options box, make sure once again that maintain offset is not checked and I will hit apply. Now you'll see that that box is stuck to his hand uh, and you will notice that it is actually directly attached to the wrist joint which isn't very good if you want the character to be holding it and that's why we put our box controller in a group. Now we can select that box control and we could position it properly. We could scale it down if we wanted to and spend the time to make sure it looks like the character is actually holding the box. And now when I move this arm around it will forever be stuck in his hand until I choose to switch the locators. Now if you are in IK and then you switch to FK mode or vice versa the constraint will no longer hold its value. So you need to make sure you know which one you want to do otherwise you'll have to re-constrain it and it might be a headache. And for parent constraints uh, you always need to select the parent first and then shift select the child and then it'll hold its value and you'll see that I'm getting some weird issues here and the reason is because it's constrained to two different things it's constrained to the IK control and it's constrained to the FK control which is no good so choose one as a definitive option. Now let's say that we wanted this character to set the object down. I could grab this other locator and I could put that locator wherever I want him to set the box down. Let's say there was a table here and I animated him to bring his arm forward and to set the box down. I would then have a keyframe on the box control and then go to whatever key you want him to set it down to and right before it leaves his hand set another keyframe go to the very next keyframe and then go to the switch option and type in zero and now that box is no longer constrained to his hand it'll flip back and forth between those two and you may have to do some uh, adjustments to make it look like it's actually leaving his hand because the box will pop into its zeroed out pose in between the two options and you may need to reset the translations and whatnot to put it into place properly. Um, so keep in mind 
what attributes you have keyed for your box and what attributes you have keyed for your locators and what attributes you have keyed for the hand or whatever it's constrained to. And once you have those two locators set up, that's when it would be a good idea to either hide them or make them unselectable in a layer. And this can hold all sorts of useful options if your character is going to be lifting something up or pushing something or be stuck to something. And I do recommend in the event that the character is pushing against something or lifting something, it can be easier to animate with an IK hand. It's ultimately up to your workflow. Uh, try out both to see what works best for you. And please let me know if you have any questions. Uh, when it comes to, say, animating or constraining two hands to a single object, that is a slightly different process altogether, and we can go over that another time. And that is all I've got for now, so good luck on getting your characters to pick up and set down an object.